in this module, we talk about the calculation for the confidence interval estimate for the difference between two population means. When the population variances are unknown, but assumed to be unequal. We'll check for three assumptions. The first assumption is to check whether the measurements are independent in both the groups. We check whether the measurements in each population are normally distributed or not. And thirdly, we'll check whether the measurement in each group have the known variance. And if not known, then whether they have equal variances. Here we are discussing a special scenario where two groups are independent and they both comes from the population that follows a normal probability distribution and their population variances are unknown, but they are assumed to be unequal. When population variances are not equal, it gives a rise to a special scenario because even though the two population may be assumed to be normally distribution, it's not proper to use the T distribution as just outlined in constructing confidence intervals. And the solution of the problem for unequal variances was proposed by Behrens and later was verified and generalized by Fisher. Therefore, the solutions which were proposed by Neyman, Sheffe, and Welch. And this problem is discussed in detail by Cochrane. When the variances are equal, unequal, this expression given here does not follow the T distribution with degrees of freedom n1 plus n2 minus 2. Consequently, the T distribution cannot be used in a usual way to obtain the reliability factor for the confidence interval. Hence, we end up using a more complex form for the reliability factor in this case. Here's a solution proposed by Cochrane that consists of computing the reliability factor T prime 1 minus alpha by 2 by the following formula, where T prime 1 minus alpha by 2 is kind of the weighted average, where W1 is a weight S1 square over N1, and W2 is a weight for the sample 2, which is S2 square over N2. T1 with N minus 1, N1 minus 1 degrees of freedom, and T2 with N2 minus degrees of freedom. Then the expression for 100 into 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval can be given by the express, expression given below. Here are adjustments to the reliability question. Coefficient may also be made by reducing the number of degrees of freedom instead of modifying T in the manner just demonstrated. Many computer programs calculate an, an adjusted reliability coefficient in this way. Let's take an example. A research team wants to determine the effectiveness of an integrated outpatient dual diagnosis treatment program for mentally ill subjects. The authors were addressing the problem of substance abuse issues among people with severe mental health disorder. A retrospective chart review was carried out on 50 consecutive patients to the Substance Abuse Mental Illness Program at VA San Diego Health Care System. One of the outcome variables examined was the number of inpatient treatment days for psychiatric disorder during the year following the end of the program. We got, we got two groups. The first group of 18 subjects with schizophrenia with a mean number of days 4.7 and the standard deviation of 9.3 days. The other group contained 10 subjects with bipolar disorder with the mean number of psychiatric disorder treatment days to be 8.8 .8 days and with a standard deviation of 11.5 days. Here we wish to construct the 95% confidence interval. Assuming both the samples come from the population that follows the normal probability distribution and their population variances are unknown but assumed to be equal, unequal. Here we are testing these three assumptions. Whether the samples come from the population that follows the normal distribution, whether these two samples are independent, and if their variances are unknown, whether they are equal or not. While we test for this first assumption for independent samples, it clearly states that we have two groups. The group one is of 18 subjects with schizophrenia, and group two is of 10 subjects with bipolar disorder. So these two groups are entirely distinct from each other. Hence, we can say that the assumption for independent sample is verified. Secondly, we want to test whether both the samples come from the population that follows the normal probability distribution. See if it's already known and stated in the statement. Practically, it's not stated. Then we perform a test for the goodness of fit. Here, in this example, we're assuming that both the samples come from the population that follows the normal probability distribution, which is already stated in the statement. Hence, this assumption is also verified, and we don't have to check it further using the goodness of fit test. 
Thirdly, we got to test whether the variances are known or not. And in this special case, variances are unknown to us. So usually they are unknown, but for small population, it can be known. And if not known, then we can estimate it from the sample and use Levine's test to compare if unknown population variances are equal or not. But here in this case, we don't really have to go to the Levine's test or F test to check whether the variances, population variances are equal or not. We just rely on the statement given to us that clearly states that, that their population variances are unknown but assumed to be unequal. Hence, these three assumptions are verified. Our samples are independent. Our, population, our samples comes from the populations that follows the normal probability distribution. And thirdly, our variances, though they are unknown, but they are unequal. We'll use the given expression to calculate the confidence interval. Here we have x1 bar, which is the mean from the sample 1, which is 4.7. x bar 2 is the mean from the sample 2, which is 8.8. .8. s1 squared is the sample variance for sample 1. Since we are given the standard deviation, hence we are just squaring the standard deviation, and 9.3 square will give us the variance from the sample 1. And likewise, s2 square is the sample variance for sample 2, and we are also given the standard deviation here. So we just simply square it up, which is 11.5 square, which will be equivalent to the variance for the sample 2. Secondly, we got to calculate the reliability factor. And to calculate the reliability factor, we make use of the table for the percentiles of the t-distribution. With confidence level 0 0.95 at degrees of freedom 17 and 9, we got t1 and t2. And using this uh, complex formula that's stated above, the t-value is 2.2216. Using this reliability factor, estimates for the standard error, and the difference between means, the calculated confidence interval turned out to be minus 13.5 to 5.3. We can say that if we were to repeat the study many, many times and compute confidence interval in the same way, about 95% of the intervals would include the, differ the difference between the population means. And since the interval includes zero, we conclude that the population means may be equal. To make an appropriate choice between using Z or T as a reliability factor, we must consider sample size, whether the population sampled is, is the normal distribution or not, and whether population variance is known. In the next module, we're going to talk about it.